167. There is one life, and that I share with God. There are not different kinds of life, for life is like the truth. It does not have degrees. It is the one condition in which all that God created share. Like all his thoughts, it has no opposite. There is no death because what God created shares his life. There is no death because an opposite to God does not exist. There is no death because the Father and the Son are one. In this world, there appears to be a state that is life's opposite. We call it death. Yet we have learned that the idea of death takes many forms. It is the one idea which underlies all feelings that are not supremely happy. It is the alarm to which you give response of any kind that is not perfect joy. All sorrow, loss, anxiety and suffering and pain, even a little sigh of weariness, a slight discomfort or the merest frown acknowledge death. You think that death is of the body, yet it is but an idea irrelevant to what is seen as physical. A thought is in the mind, it can be then applied as mind directs it, but its origin is where it must be changed if change occurs. Ideas leave not their source. The emphasis this course has placed on that idea is due to its centrality in our attempts to change your mind about yourself. It is the reason you can heal. It is the cause of healing. It is why you cannot die. Its truth established you as one with God. Death is the thought that you are separate from your Creator. It is the belief conditions change, emotions alternate because of causes you cannot control, you did not make and you can never change. Emotions alternate because of causes you cannot control, you did not make and you can never change. It is the fixed belief ideas can leave their source and take on qualities the source does not contain, becoming different from their own origin, apart from it in kind as well as distance, time and form. Death cannot come from life. Ideas remain united to their source. They can extend all that their source contains, in that they can go far beyond themselves. But they cannot give birth to what was never given them. As they are made, so will their making be. As they were born, so will they then give birth and where they come from, there will they return. The mind can think it sleeps, but that is all. It cannot change what is its waking state. It cannot make a body, nor abide within a body. What is alien to the mind does not exist because it has no source. 
For mind creates all things that are, and cannot give them attributes it lacks, nor change its own eternal mindful state. It cannot make the physical. What seems to die is but the sign of mind asleep. The opposite of life can only be another form of life. As such, it can be reconciled with what created it, because it is not opposite in truth. Its form may change, it may appear to be what it is not, yet mind is mind, awake or sleeping. It is not its opposite in anything created, nor in what it seems to make when it believes it sleeps. God creates only mind awake. He does not sleep and his creations cannot share what he gives not, nor make conditions which he does not share with them. The thought of death is not the opposite to thought of life forever unopposed by opposites of any kind, the thoughts of God remain forever changeless, with the power to extend forever changelessly but yet within themselves, for they are everywhere. What seems to be the opposite of life is merely sleeping. When the mind elects to be what it is not, and to assume an alien power which it does not have, a foreign state it cannot enter, or a false condition not within its source, it merely seems to go to sleep a while. It dreams of time, an interval in which what seems to happen never has occurred, changes wrought are substanceless, and all events are nowhere. When the mind awakes, it but continues as it always was. Let us today be children of the truth and not deny our holy heritage. Our life is not as we imagine it. Who changes life because he shuts his eyes or makes himself what he is not because he sleeps and sees in dreams an opposite to what he is. We will not ask for death in any form today, nor will we let imagined opposites to life abide even an instant where the thought of life eternal has been set by God himself. His holy home we strive to keep today as he established it, and wills it be forever and forever. He is Lord of what we think today, and in his thoughts which have no opposite, we understand there is one life, and that we share with him. With all creation, with their thoughts as well, from whom he created in a unity of life which cannot separate in death and leave the source of life from where it came. We share our life because we have one source, a source from which perfection comes to us, remaining always in the holy minds which he created perfect. As we were, so are we now and will forever be. A sleeping mind must waken as it sees its own perfection mirroring the Lord of life so perfectly it fades into what is reflected there. And now it is no more a mere reflection. It becomes the thing reflected and the light which makes reflection possible. No vision now is needed, for the wakening mind is one that knows its source, its self, its holiness.